Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these elegant petal wirework bracelets that you can decorate however you want to to suit your personal style. So if you want to learn how you can make these for yourself, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. The wire that I'm using is a regular round copper wire and the first gauge here is a 1.25mm and that will be our base wire. And for the weaving wire we need a 0.3mm, now you could easily swap this for say a 0.4mm, it all depends on the look that you want. The finer the gauge, the finer the weaving will be. And then of course we need the beads that we want to decorate with. So I've got some star-shaped blue-coated hematite gemstone beads, some 3mm rounds, and these are faceted silver-coated hematite gemstone beads. Now these are just the beads that I'm going to be using. You can really mix and match your beads however you want it to achieve different looks. Even just using a single bead as a main feature in each petal like I did on one example. So that is completely up to you. Now we also need a couple of tools, so of course I'm using my flush cutters to cut the wire with. Tweezing those pliers to help manipulate the wire. I'm going to be using six step bell making pliers for the clasp, but of course you can use round nose pliers for this. And finally I'm using this step mandrel to help make the petal shapes and get them as uniform as possible. You can really use whatever form of mandrel or pliers that you have handy and you want the size to be. So the full material list and useful links will be in the description box down below. Otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. So we need to cut some lengths of our wire and what I have here is a length of about 65 centimeters of the 1.25 mil and just make sure it's nice and straight so we don't have any obvious kinks in it. Now as for the weaving wire, I'm leaving that attached to the reel, that way we won't have to work with a ridiculously long length and also we have minimum waist stitch. What we then need to do is grab our base wire here and I'm using my mandrel. We just need to create the initial loop that's going to be part of the clasp and I'm just using the smallest step on there. It's up to you how large you want yours to be. But then I'm going to find the midpoint of the wire and then push the two ends around the mandrel and then you want to make sure that one length crosses over the other one as we keep pushing it and we're basically creating a bit of a teardrop shape so we end up with something like that and then we're going to go straight into creating the first petal shape here so I'm going to take the mandrel and just choose the step that I want for the size of petal that I want to make and just place the mandrel right into that corner and just keep hold of it and then we want to start bringing the two ends around the mandrel in the same way that we just did and again I'm overlapping the wires and I'm going to make sure that I keep overlapping them in the same direction so in this case here because the first time I overlapped them I took the left one over the right one I'm going to make sure I keep doing that so it gets nice and consistent and then just push them closer together until we have the size of petal here that we want so we've now ended up with something like that and then from here we need to start weaving so I'm going to grab my weaving wire and I'm just going to start towards the end leave a short little tail here and then we first of all need to attach this so we can just start a bit further up the wire hold on to that little tail and then start to wrap the weaving wire around the base wire and just do it a couple of times initially make sure the wraps are nice and tight together and then I'm just going to push the wraps down the wire so they end up sitting right here where we have the very first crossover point that we made and then just keep holding on to the tail as I'm then going to start the figure of eight weave that we're going to then use to fill in this petal shape. So right now my wire is coming down right in the middle of the petal shape there and is wrapping around this side of the petal. So what we need to do is then come underneath the other side of the petal so that's the other length of wire and then wrap around that one. So just use the opening up here to come between your wires. Wrap around that other side and again do that twice as well. Make sure the wraps are pushed down all the way and they're nice and tight. And then just come down right in the middle of that petal again. And then we need to move back to the first side. So basically what we're doing is we're wrapping twice on each side and then in between crossing back and forth which is what's going to then fill in this whole shape and give us that final petal look and a base where we can then add our beads onto. So that's twice around this side, cross underneath, come over to the other side, just go between your wires whenever you need to, which we also have to do because we don't have an end of the wire here as it's still attached to the reel, but that's not a problem because we have that opening. Cross to the other side and you just want to keep going like this and you'll be able to see that it's going to gradually fill up more and more and just do that until you get to the middle of the petal here, so the widest part. 
Now once I reach the middle here, which is the widest part, we're still going to do the same thing to fill in the rest of the space, but you'll find that once we get to this widest part and start moving towards a narrower point, then the Y is going to naturally want to slip down towards that narrow point. And of course that will end up making the weave a lot less tight and more messy looking. So what we want to do is try and counteract that, which means I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm bringing it over to the other side to wrap it. But as I'm wrapping on this side here, I'm going to make sure to push down the previous wrap that I just did while I'm then tightening and pushing down on the current wrap and just bring it around again. And just make sure I'm pushing down on both sides at the same time. And then I'm crossing to the other side while I'm then pushing down on the wrap that I just made. And also while I'm then making my new wraps on the other side here. So basically just keep pushing everything close together while we do the wraps. That's going to help counteract the wire wanting to slip up to the narrow point and we're still going to get a nice and tight weave. So just do this until we reach that point where the whole shape is filled in. Now once the whole shape is filled in here, we don't have any more space to weave back and forth, we reach that point where the wires cross over. So what we need to do is basically get a weaving wire to the other side of that crossover point but we want to make it as seamless as possible. So I'm just going to grab the weaving wire and I've ended up on the top wire here and I just want to basically continue my wraps so instead of crossing from side to side I'm now just going to keep wrapping on this one until I get to the other side of the wire that's crossing underneath so we're basically kind of just bridging the gap that would be with a few wraps here and then once we've ended up on the other side of the wire crossing underneath we have basically ended up with the weaving wire inside of what's going to be the next petal so in between the two base wires so what we're going to do now is shape the next petal before we can continue weaving so i'm grabbing my mandrel again and just make sure that i'm using the same step then again i place the mandrel right up against that corner there with a wire on each side then i want to start bringing the two lengths towards each other there around the mandrel and again cross them over one over the other and make sure you cross the same one over as we did previously so I keep using the left one crosses over the right one and then just keep pushing them together until we're happy with the shape and size of this petal and obviously it matches the previous one nicely and looks a bit something like that and now we have the shape in place we're ready to continue weaving and that's literally the same thing as I just showed you on the first one. So grab your weaving wire here and we just want to start the figure of eight weave. So I have the weaving wire wrapping around this outer wire in this direction here. So going in towards the middle of the petal underneath. So that means I need to come up in the middle of the petal now and then cross to the other side to wrap around the wire on the other side there and start to do the back and forth to fill in the space and then again we just use that opening at the top to bring our wire through do the second wrap make sure they're pushed all the way down into that corner and then come up the middle of the petal again cross back to the bottom side here and then do two wraps around that so once and twice come up in the middle and then cross over to the opposite side. And as you can see, that is the exact same figure of eight weave as the first petal. And just remember, once we get to the middle, that's the widest part of the petal. We just want to make sure that we push our wraps nice and tight every time we make a new one as we're working our way towards the narrow point again. But then you just wanna keep making your petals and wrapping them like this until you have the length that you need. So now I've got the full length that I need here, then we can cut off the excess of this weaving wire from the reel and I'm just going to leave a tail of about 50 centimeters, and I'll use that to add in the beads when we go back down. But what I just want to do first is finish off this end here so we can get rid of these wires and they don't poke us while we're adding the beads. And to do that I'm going to just take my tweezer nose pliers and I'm going to grab onto one of the lengths, I'm just taking the back one and placing them literally right where the wires are overlapping, then I'm going to bend it upwards to go straight away from the end of the bracelet so like that and then I'm going to use the other length here that's coming over the top and just wrap that around a couple of times 
to secure that nicely in place. And then I'm going to finish it off here on the back, cut off the excess and just make sure to squeeze down that end so it's not sticking out. Now what we need to do is use this length that's left to make the hook part with. Of course, if you want to add a separate clasp, you can just make another wrap loop with this. But I'm going to grab my tweezers and pliers again and we're going to go a bit further out the wire. How far you go out will determine how large the hook is going to be. So basically, you need to go out about twice the length that you want the size of the hook to be. So I'm just going to do something like that and then bend the wire back on itself, right up against the pliers there. And you're gonna find we have this gap between the wires. We need to close that up. So I'm gonna put the bend right at the back of my pliers and just squeeze it together. So we're basically tightening up the gap and end up with something like that. And then down here, closer to where that wrap is we did before, but not all the way close to it. I'm gonna place my pliers and then bend the length here up against the pliers to put a bend into it and then bring it over the top of the other length there because we then need to wrap this length around to secure this in place. So just keep hold of it with your pliers and then wrap this around until we basically run into the other wrap that we did and we don't have any more space to wrap on. Then flip it to the back and cut off the excess. And just like before, make sure to squeeze the end down so it's not going to catch our scratch while we're wearing it. Then I'm just grabbing my six-step bell making pliers and I'm just using the second smallest step and I'm placing these about the midpoint of this length that we just made and then we need to bend this backwards and basically this is what's going to be creating the hook shape and then you can see that's also going to end up with the full length of the final hook so you want to make it longer initially than it actually needs to end up being so we can obviously bend it back like this what I then just like to do is grab onto the very end where we have that bend with my pliers and literally just flick it back upwards a bit just makes it a bit easier to use as a hook and then we have this part of the clasp in place and now what we then need to do is go back to our weaving wire here that we left the tail of and start to add in our beads. So I'm just taking the beads I'm using and adding them onto the length of wire here, letting them drop all the way down. Then I want to just bring it across. They're gonna end up sitting like this across the middle of that petal. Now to get them to stay in place, I'm gonna take the end of the wire and just put it down through a little gap right here where the base wires are crossing on the opposite side of that petal and then just pull it through and then you can see as I pull it down it's going to get tighter and be fastened nicely like that. Now you can choose however many beads you want. So you can use multiple beads and create a bit of a pattern design or you can just use a single bead if you just want that to be the focus like I did in the other design. But then on the back here we obviously need to carry on to the next petal so I'm just going to go from this side of the base wire that it's coming out from and then go down through the tip of the next petal on the other side of the base wire here to come back out on the front and then just pull that tight so this ends up just blending in with all the wrap there on the back and then straight away my wire is in position to add in the next beads now what you can also do is for instance if you're just using a single bead that's going to sit more in the middle of the petal you can use the gap between the weed sections there and just go through them a bit further in and then come out of the front and you can see it comes out more in the middle of the petal and the same thing on the other side of the bead once you've added that just go down through the weave further in so it's not all the way out to the corners there or the petal so it's completely up to you and also obviously the beads that you're using but then you want to add your next set of beads and let them drop all the way down and again I'm going to go through the opposite corner of the petal from the front here towards the back and then just pull the wire through nice and gently until we end up with a bead sitting nice and tight across the petal here on the front, just like on the first one. And then we'll literally just continue like this. So basically weaving the beads on, going in and out in between the petals, moving your way all the way to the other end. And once we made it all the way to the other end, we just need to finish off the excess of these weaving wires here. So I'm just gonna start with the short one. And that one's already been wrapped around a few times on a single base wire. So I'm just going to cut off the excess, making sure there's a short little tail left and then just tuck away that tail so it's not sticking out, kind of squeeze it in among all the other wires 
and then this one that we use to add the beads and it's coming out towards the back what I just want to do before I cut it off is wrap it around a single base wire a few times just to secure it in place and once we've done that we can then go in and cut off the excess of that because that's not going to go anywhere so cut it off and then just make sure to tuck away that little tail so we can't feel anything with our fingers because obviously we don't want this to catch or scratch on our skin while we're wearing it. And now all there's left to do is shape this so we can of course use it. So you can either shape it around something that has the size and shape you want it to have like a bracelet mandrel or you can use your hands and fingers, go in and start putting a curve into it. Obviously make sure the beaded side is facing outward and then just move from side to side gradually adding more and more of a curve going back and forth and obviously the aim is to get the two ends to be close together so you can use the clasp so something like that and then just hook it in place and then you have your finished bracelet ready to wear. So that's how you make this elegant petal wire work bracelet that you can really decorate however you want to to make it personal just to your style and if you want to check out more tutorials within many different mediums feel free to check out my channel you can always like share and subscribe and if you want to support me in another way there's always a super thanks button below the video as well otherwise I really hope you enjoyed this one Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.